first time we're in a theater in a long, long time. And yeah. I have to admit something. When I walked into this, uh, after 13 months that this had been closed, I, I, it was a little overwhelming uh, to remember that there are theaters that have been closed for so long. Yeah. Now, we've had a great time at the tent and figuring out an alternative existence. I love the tent. You should never get rid of the tent. No, the tent is not going anywhere. Good. But going back into the theater for the first time, how does it feel after so long that we've been in exile? Uh, there aren't really words. Feeling the reverb is something that is, yeah, feeling that the resonance all through the space and through my body, even just speaking, it's something that I haven't gotten to experience since the last time I was in the rehearsal room at the Paris Opera March 11th on our last rehearsal we had before everything the world got shut turned down. Upside down. And, uh, and I was on an emergency flight home yeah. to the States. Our, our last thing here, that the final performance in this space was uh, in March 10. Uh, last performance of uh, Porgy and Bess, and then on Friday, March 13, we had to cancel everything. But we had the whole cast here, and uh, Musa, who was supposed to sing his first uh, Porgy with us, uh, sang with the whole cast, uh, Lord, I'm on my way. And ever since then, the ghost light have been the only thing in the theater. It's so cool. So, so now that it's, a, we hope is gonna be open, it's like a big deal. That's so, amazing that that's the last, that was the last thing that was sung in here. Yeah, Lord, I'm on my way. It gives me goose pimples yeah. think about it. I saw that video you guys yeah. posted. I, yeah, I saw it when I was in the airport waiting <laughs> for my uh, uh, lift to come pick me up. Yeah. To take me back to my home. It's crazy. So much has happened, right, in the past 13 months. And uh, it's, yeah. it's been incredible. But you've been with us for the past season as a company player. Tell us about this past year, about you being in an Atlanta opera company player and working with your husband, Michael Mays, on all those productions. How has it been this past year? This year has had a lot of blessings that have come out of it. So getting to be with Michael for more than two weeks <laughs> at a time has been really wonderful and getting to work together in the same show now. This is the first time we've ever been in the same show in Carmen. But um, to be at the same company for an extended period of time, not just for a, a short festival in the summer, um, that's only happened two other times as well. So um, yeah, that part has been really wonderful. And we're only three hours drive from our new home in Columbia, South Carolina. So we've been able to go back and forth and get to actually see our nephews grow up and help with our family and actually be present, real, do real human things, not just traveling artist stuff, which is beautiful and I'm so thankful for that, but I didn't realize how important it was to actually live a real life that has some real stuff going on that's not always easy, you know, that yeah. helps. It really helps to inform what it is that we're doing here. I always say that we don't pay people to perform, we pay them to be away from the families. Yes. So when the family is here, it makes everything so much better. Totally. And I believe in it because I try to travel with my kids wherever mm. I go. Cause I, I can't stand losing a, a night where you don't tell them a bedtime story or you don't, you know, that's, that's the hardest part. Yeah, well, they're also so little and they're growing exponentially. So. I mean, same thing with our nephews, they're about to be two and four, and the, even when we're away from them for three weeks, and we come back and we get to see them and chill, even when we've got our masks on and we're hanging out, it's amazing what happens in three weeks yeah. at that age. Yeah. And they still want to hang out with us. They, they oh still gosh. think we're cool, which is not going to be the case forever. So. Uncle Mai. Exactly. Uncle Mai. <laughs> Where's Pasta? Where's Pasta? You know, they, I love oh, that. It's the best. So talk about Mike. Um, this is the first time that you are playing romantically involved yeah. people. <laughs> and you even have an iconic moment in the show. Yeah. Where both of you were directed 
to remove your masks for the first time in Carmen <laughs> yep. and give a real kiss. Real kiss with tongue. With with tongues. Yep. I mean, I, I can't see because they're contained in the mouth. I hope they will remain contained there. <laughs> how, how does that feel? How how's that? Is that weird for you guys? What? No, it's easy. It's easy. It's totally easy. Yeah. Just ah, this is this is the moment. That's I don't good. know. It's kind of silly, but it's super easy. And it's such he's a cool fun. moment. He's fun to flirt with on stage, too, especially yeah. when he's got his light up cowboy outfit on. Tell us about the difference. This is your first Carmen. Yeah. It's a huge undertaking to, to make a role debut in the middle of this madness. Yeah. Uh, you've had a huge triumph with it, with the audience, with the critics. The, the reviews are going crazy for it. How does it feel? Like, how did it feel to go through this crazy month of trying to wrap your head around this character, this iconic opera, and then just doing it, birthing it, and hopefully enjoying the fruits of it? It was a lot. <laughs> I don't normally sing roles like Carmen. It's so iconic. Every type of mezzo-soprano and many, many kinds of sopranos have sung it too. So there's really a potpourri of, of recordings and I, I, pretty much any voice that's ever sung it. So um, that was one of the first things that I learned about it was just do it and do it how you're going to do it. And just right. let it modulate and happen how it's going to happen. Cool. Um, so that part, technically great. The the actual character, though, uh, I spend a lot of time playing children and magical creatures, and oftentimes boy children. Uh, so <laughs> that was a real different thing to wrap my head around. And that's actually, we met while I was playing probably the youngest version of Olga you've ever had in an Onyegin. That's right. That was a great, that was a great experience, because you yeah. sang Olga here on this stage, yeah, too. Yeah, on this stage. But going back to oh, this yeah. idea of... Uh, you singing a lot of magical creatures and prepubescent boys. Yeah. And then tackling this iconic of all roles, this girl who's supposed to be the sexiest thing yeah. in the world. How does it feel to tackle it for the first time and putting yourself out there? Because every, every time that you do something like that, that takes a lot of uh, mental efforts. The imposter syndrome is high. Uh-huh. There we go, I'm admitting it. The imposter syndrome is high. Every time, especially when I get in the periactoy for the um, for the, the whole la la la, I'm gonna give you a sexy dance situation, I, I literally just like, <laughs> the only thing here is me and I can see my, luckily it's lit in a way that I can see myself a little bit in that uh, in the reflection and I just pretend that I'm trying to figure out how to be sexy in high school, like, how am I gonna get the boys to like me? And I would look in the mirror and be like, this is a good angle, or whatever. I can't believe I just said that out loud. Um, but that is a, a place I go to <laughs> in that moment, because I, like, if I think about, if I even catch a glimpse for real and earnest of Trey looking at me, I'm like, don't look at me! <laughs> wow, yeah. isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's crazy. Well, also as women in society, whatever, especially coming from a pretty, you know, big Italian Sicilian family, it's everything, everybody else is before you, you, you know, so it's not, and you don't want to be too immodest in that way and put it out there. And that's just, it's just the culture of, of the whole thing. But, but it's so rare for an artist to look for the sincere portrayal of it because it's so easy for Carmen to just be like I'm I'm hot well, look yeah. how sexy I am we've all seen that and and it's like who cares about you but you found a way to tap into something that is authentic and real and still convincing as well, Carmen well thank you um, but what is what is the process that leads there cuz that's cuz it's much easier to just go you know I'm a boy and I'm sitting like that or I'm hot and then yeah. it ends there. It's not interesting as a character. How do you approach character interpretation when you do all that you do? Lots of reading the libretto. Lots of going back, especially with this one, going back to the original uh, novella. And the way that Carmen's described in the original novella is actually not really how she's 
cast what, what's uh, more in fashion to cast her as right now. When she's described in the novella, she's described as like a tiny, scrappy little spitfire of a thing, you know? And I was like, oh, well, that's really helpful for me because I don't physically fit into, obviously, because I, it's so easy for those who cast to look at me and go, mm, children, magical creatures, that's easy. Because on a big opera stage, look at me, I'm five feet tall and very tiny for an opera singer. It's, it's, it's easy. Um, I'm not what is considered in our, especially American society, to be like, sexy and beautiful. I have a pretty flat chest and I'm kind of scrappy looking, you know? So that was helpful going back to, to the novella for sure. So as you look into the future, now that things seem to maybe calm down, maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel, what is your hope for the future? And how, how is this whole year going to inform us and the, the role of opera in our world? Everybody keeps saying, I can't wait till we can go back to normal. And I'm like, dudes, there's no going back. That normal is no longer normal. That seems weird to me. It seems not right. One of the, again, another blessing of this pandemic has been it's forced like 15 to 20 years worth of of progress within our business and our world at large in a matter of 13 months, 14 months. Yeah. And it was totally necessary and it had to happen. And I, I just, there's no going back. And anybody who wants to go back, that's great. I'm, I, I, I send love to you, but um, please join me and you, all of us on, the, on this uh, new vessel that's gonna lead us to a beautiful shore. Right? Absolutely.
made in Georgia.